What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. We got Dustin on the show, as always. Good to have you, Dustin. Yeah, thanks for having me, as always. Absolutely, and this is a, a great episode. We're getting to, you know, a favorite time of year. Uh, we just finished week 15 and heading into week 16, and everything, you know, if you're on the outside looking in, everything's a playoff game. We can... Might as well say that the playoffs have started for, for a few of these teams, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's, for example, the Packers, you know, they're living on the edge. They have to win almost every game if they're trying to get in or, you know, the Lions. So every game is a must-win game. Yeah, I mean, you look at, like, the Commanders and Giants game. It's like the winner, uh, you know, has a – pretty good chance of making the playoffs and then the loser likely not and so it's just so much you know best time of the year when it's much more meaningful football and uh you see the intensity step up as well and the the harder hits and just more on the line you know yes sir so let's start it off with uh thursday night in week 15 the the 49ers at the seahawks this is always a great matchup i love this rivalry uh, always great games. And with Jimmy G out and Brock Purdy starting, I picked the Seahawks to win this game. I felt, you know, that was more meaningful to them. Uh, and, uh, you know, they need to win to, to get into the playoffs. But the Niners, surprisingly, they jump out to a 21-3 to lead and hang on to win 21-13. to uh, How impressed have you been with Brock Purdy and, uh, you know, he hasn't been great, but he's done enough on a loaded team to keep them winning games, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, Brock, you're not going to get the flashy type of plays from Brock Purdy that you get from Josh Allen and, you know, guys like Patrick Mahomes and stuff. But he does enough to go in there. You know, this past game, he, he threw for two touchdowns, which when you have that kind of defense sometimes is enough to win the ball game. And as long as you don't turn the ball over, you can win with Brock Purdy. Exactly. And that's something we've been talking about on this podcast for, you know, all season really is how important it is to protect the football turnovers. You know, I think I look at it now today, like punts are more rare than ever. And so possessions become more valuable than ever because more often than not possessions are ending in points. So if you turn the ball over, and are giving uh, the opponent free possessions and taking possessions away from you, that becomes more and more meaningful nowadays, doesn't it? Do you agree with that? Yeah, um, absolutely, bro. I mean, you know, turnovers can can uh, cost you a game, and, you know, they can also help you win if they're in your favor. And so Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, rookie, seventh-round pick, him protecting the ball, no turnovers in this game in a hostile environment. Seattle known for being a tough place to go and play well. So credit to Brock Purdy, not turning the ball over and uh, doing enough to get a big win. Um, let's see here. George Kittle, four catches for 93 yards and two touchdowns. How about Geno Smith? I feel like He's come back down to earth a little bit. Uh, he combines for 250-plus yards, one touchdown, no turnovers. The Kenneth Walker injury seemed to really derail the Seahawks, and Geno isn't going to do enough on his own to carry this team to to consistently to wins, in my opinion. Um, and so the Kenneth Walker injury really derailed the Seahawks' season. I believe they were 7-4. and four. Now they're seven and six and uh, in danger of missing the playoffs, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at it, though, Alex, I mean, again, we have talked about it before. That was a team that was coming in and people were expecting them to not even have, you know, six wins max. And Gino is overachieving. And in my opinion, playing pretty well. Is he playing well enough to take them to where they got to go or want to go? Probably not. But. You know, and shout out to Gino. Congrats on be on going to your first Pro Bowl. Yeah, I mean, he makes his first Pro Bowl. Uh, I don't think anyone would have expected a season like this. I know I didn't. I thought the Seahawks were really going to struggle. So the fact that they're seven and seven, is, you know, is better than we thought. Gino played well. 
Um, but the question is, you know, does it matter? Are you going to get to the playoffs? You know, and that's the big thing. Or does your season end with everyone else, you know, when the regular season ends? And so can the Seahawks make the playoffs? They've got at the Chiefs in week 16. That's a likely a loss. So then you're looking at seven and eight. Then they play two home games against the Jets and Rams. Both games are winnable. So the question is, can you go two out of three in the final three games, Get finish nine and eight, and will that be enough to get the playoffs? What do you think? Well, I mean, you know, there's – that Chiefs game is going to be huge. That is a – you need to upset Kansas City if you want to have some relief, you know. You don't want to be going into the last two games. I mean, obviously you have to win those, but sitting there thinking like, damn, now we have to, you know, sitting there nervous trying to go into them games. You have to beat the Chiefs, bro. Yeah, I know. And uh, we'll see if they can do it. And, I mean, the Chiefs haven't been playing their best football the last two weeks. I believe they barely beat the Broncos and then barely beat the Texans. So where's it at? It's in Kansas City, though. Oh, man. So it's going to be very tough. I'm, you know, leaning Chiefs. You know, if the Chiefs play their best football, they should win. Kenneth Walker would need to have a big game. Combining for just 79 yards isn't going to cut it. So I think the Chiefs get that win. I think the Seahawks are likely 9-8. and eight, And the big game to me, really, at Chiefs is going to be very tough to win. The home game against the Jets in Week 17 is going to be very big. Uh, if they can't win that, then they're not going to the playoffs, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it's it's kind of close because if you look at it, you know, Green Bay could finish 9-8, and eight, and then you have Detroit right there in the area somewhere. So it's every single game for every single team that's living on the edge is must win. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see. You know, if Gino made the Pro Bowl, so congrats to him. And he needs to step his game up as well these final three weeks, carry the team, and see if he can get them into the playoffs. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch and see what happens. Um, we said Seahawks at Chiefs on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Um, first of all, how do you feel about all these games? The big slate of games this weekend are all going to be on Saturday, Christmas Eve. I can't wait. I'm excited for that. Yeah, uh, you know, food, football, your presents. I mean, what more can you ask for? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, you know, Monday night football. We got t football tonight, Thursday night football. So I can't wait for this weekend to get started. Um, commanders at the 49ers, a seven and six and one commanders, another team that we were discussing that are on the border trying to get into the playoffs. Can they or can't they? And then uh, they're at the 10 and four 49ers. Brock Purdy is going to start again. You know, such a deflating loss for the Commanders at home against the Giants really hurt their playoff chances. And I don't think they go into San Francisco and get a win either. Do you? I mean, I don't just because, man, that San Francisco team is hot and they're good. Yeah, they I mean, best defense in football, you know? Yeah, and but, you know, we'll get to that Giants-Commanders game because I have a few things that kind of irked my nerves about the officiating that I really want to talk about. There's a few, there's quite a bit to talk about in that game, and we're going to get to that a little later. But, yeah, um, the so, I mean, you know, we'll see if Taylor Henneke can finish the job, get the commanders in, but a tough loss for them on, on uh, Sunday night. Let's go to Saturday. We had three games on Saturday. They were a blast, and we got to bring this up, Dustin. I know you don't want to talk about your Colts making history, but we got to <laughs> talk about it. First off, the Colts jump out to a 33 to nothing halftime lead in Minnesota against the Vikings. I picked the Vikings to win. Um, how are you feeling at halftime? You know, the first half, you're up 33 to nothing. You pick six, Kirk Cousins, everything's going your way. How are you feeling at halftime, up 33 nothing? Yeah, bro. I mean, I was pretty confident. First of all, it, it was shocking to me because, you know, to hold a team where, you know, you got Justin Jefferson, 
Adam Thielen and KJ Osborne, you know, to zero points in the in the first half, that's pretty impressive, you know. Yeah, Delvin Cook too, you know. Yeah, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, did you feel – did you have any inclination, though? I mean, that Colts team isn't very good right now, you know? So, did you feel like anything could happen the second half? It's a long game still to be played. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, Minnesota is the overall better teams, and better teams with better coaching make adjustments, you know, to mm -hmm. come out of half and eventually get it right. And I figured that was going to happen just because I like Saturday, but I just don't have enough faith in his staff to make adjustments. And guess what? They didn't, bro. They didn't make no adjustments, and Minnesota came out and scored almost on every possession. And that's the thing that why I, you know, I kept an eye on this game. I didn't turn it off. I kept watching because the Vikings, you mentioned all those weapons on offense. The Vikings are very explosive. You know, they can put up 40 in a hurry. And so 33-0 uh, is a massive hole, but the Vikings are very capable of putting up some points and getting back into the game. And then if you're a one or two scores back, anything can happen, right? Yep, Absolutely. So the Vikings pull off the upset. Unbelievably, they come back from down 33-0 at halftime and win 39-36 in overtime. The biggest comeback in NFL history, passing the 1993 Bills in that playoff game comeback against the Houston Oilers. So the Vikings, you know, break NFL history with that win. Um what were your thoughts post game? You know, the Colts make history in a bad way blow a massive lead you said you don't trust you know Jeff Saturday and his staff what do you think of the Colts going forward there's been some rumors about GM Chris Ballard possibly getting fired at the end of the season what do you think of, on the situation in Indy currently well um see my view on this my take is first of all Ursay, please make the right decision I love Jeff Saturday as a human being you know, as a human and, you know, analyst, but there's, we need a real head coach. And to be honest, Alex, I think it's time to like clean house and do an overhaul, you know, uh, bring in the right guy, get your quarterback. And we might have to do what we did with Andrew Luck. I mean, the situation was so dire when we drafted Luck, he had to start his rookie season, you know, so we may have to go get a guy, make sure he's the right guy, which, you know, Will Levis, I like him a lot. And, um, you know, we just got to make sure we draft the right guy. And, and Chris Ballard does have to go because he's the one responsible for hiring Frank Reich. But, you know, it's also kind of looking like Frank Reich might not have been the problem, bro. I think there's a lot of problems to go around. And I think you hit it on the head with ever since Andrew Luck left, they've been trying to fill a hole. And they've been going veteran after veteran after veteran. And I'm sure you love to try to go get someone like Aaron Rodgers. But I think it's much more likely the Colts do hit the reset button and and rebuild this thing. You know, you don't have to do a complete rebuild, but a retool. Get a head coach in that knows what he's doing um, and, uh, you know, start over. And I agree. I think Chris Ballard's got to go. Um just because he's going to be the fall guy. You know, you can't fire Jim Ursay, the owner, so it's going to be someone else, right? Yeah, but see, my question is, Alex, I've never seen Ursay act like this. Like, like, where is this coming from? This is in, He's never been incompetent. Is it because he got lucky and had a, Hall of, a you know, first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback and then a number two before he retired and has never had to deal with the situation? I don't know. No, I honestly, I think uh, Ursa is a pretty good owner. I, I mean, he's he's got his faults like anybody else, but he's a hands-on owner. He's aggressive. He wants to win. Everyone knows that. And that's half the battle right there. I mean, some of these franchises, like my Bears, I don't even know if they're trying to win. Uh, you know, they might be happy with just making a profit every year, and who cares if we're competing for championships or not. That's the hard part. So you got that with Ursa. He's had success in the past. They've been trying to fill the hole of Andrew Luck, and it just hasn't worked. You know, 
I didn't disagree with bringing in Philip Rivers. I thought bringing in uh, Carson Wentz was was a calculated risk. You know, it didn't work out. Uh, Matt Ryan was wasn't a bad move. I don't think. You know, it just didn't work out. And I, my entire thought process was that Frank Reich wasn't the guy, and I still believe that. I don't think Saturday is the guy either. So I think it starts with getting a competent head coach in there and uh, then uh, finding a quarterback. And then, you know, then you can build from there. But that's the foundation is coaching quarterback of any organization, right? Absolutely. And let me say this real quick. So, you know, that was, to me, a lot of Colts fans, and this is my opinion too, we kind of put the blame, and I know that you can't 100%, but we kind of put the blame on Ballard for the reason why Andrew Luck, you know, had to retire because he refused, bro, to get us the offensive line that we needed to protect Andrew. Uh-huh. But and then he built a pretty impressive offensive line post Andrew Luck. He did, but which is not which is not what the Colts needed. I mean, Andrew would still be playing right now. And in my opinion, we would at least have one championship. Yeah, I think it's some bad luck, some bad timing as to why the Colts organization is in this mess that it is now compared to what it could have been. You know, you keep luck long term, you protect him. Luck's a Super Bowl contender for a decade plus, you know. And yeah, and I mean, you know, Colts fans always say it was a bad move, but it was not a bad move when we went out and got. Philip Rivers, because guess what? We made the playoffs, correct? Yeah, and they were competitive. Um, but, you know, it's tough. You know, it's tough to to win in this league. We say that all the time. You know, it's a very competitive league. And if, you know, I mean, so the Col- I, at end of the story, the Colts are going to have to do some changes and, and try to get the right head coach. And I trust Ursay to figure it out. And I don't expect, you know, you guys are stuck with Ursay. He's not going to sell the team anytime soon. So we'll see if he can get it right. Uh, but this year's a wash. Uh, how do you feel real quick about the Colts announced that Matt Ryan has been benched and the team will go with Nick Foles uh, going forward? Uh, so Nick Foles will get the start on Monday Night Football against the Chargers. Um, how do you feel about that? I don't like it. Um the benching, I understand, but where's Sam? You know, is he hurt? What's up with Sam? I don't think he's hurt. I that's the thing to me. I don't know if if Saturday doesn't, you know, like the way the Sam plays or something. But I have no idea, bro. But to me, this is a time when you let Sam get his experience. Let him have these last four games. Let him start. I mean, the season's gone anyway, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't see anything, you know, on here about him being hurt. So maybe that's a preference to go with Nick Foles. But, yeah, when you're bad, you should be evaluating the young talent. So I would be wanting to have Sam Millinger out there. Is this um, is this the ahead. last time we see Matt Ryan playing for the Colts? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you because I already know my opinion. Yeah, I think so. Uh, what's the point of playing them anymore? You know, you're out of contention. You're a bad team. Hit the reset. Evaluate talent. Matt Ryan's going to pro- likely retire after the year so. Um, Week 16, the 8-5-1 and five and one Giants who get a big boost from that road, you know, divisional win. In week 15, week 16, they go to Minnesota at the Vikings Saturday, Christmas Eve, eight and five and one Giants at the 11 and three Vikings. Vikings got to be good, feeling good coming off of, you know, the biggest comeback in NFL history. You think the Vikings take care of business in, in this game? Ooh, that's a, that's a big game. Yeah, it's a good game. The Giants playing good football. They really surprised me in week 15. But I think the Vikings get the win at home. Um, and the pressure is still on the Giants. You know, if they fall to 8-6-1, and one, they're still on the, the border of making the playoffs or not. Yeah, um, I agree. Absolutely. But you know what? I, I'm going to call an upset here, Alex. 
Uh, I'm going with the Giants. All right. Giants going into Minnesota. Give me the Vikings. But I like the way the Giants have been playing football. And uh, we'll talk more about them coming up. Chargers at Colts. An opportunity for the Chargers to get a big win. Get to 9-6. and six. Maybe the Chargers actually make the playoffs this year. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, let's go to the second game on Saturday was the Ravens at the Browns. In snowy Cleveland, the Browns get the win 13-3. to A big win for the Browns. Tough loss for the Ravens. Uh, Deshaun Watson, this is the best I've seen him look in a Browns uniform. You know, we're starting to see the confidence, some chemistry with his teammates. Uh, Watson, 150-plus yards, one touchdown, no turnovers. But he just looked fluid. He looked in control, in command of the offense. Did a good job and a big uh, divisional win for Cleveland. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and that's all it's going to take for him to get comfortable is more playing time, more experience with, you know, a new wide receiver core. So, well, new to him because, you know, he hasn't really started at all this season. Yeah, so, chemistry and all that. How yep. are you feeling about the Browns? Their arrows got to be pointing up going into next year, huh? Absolutely, bro. Anytime you have somebody like, I mean, you have a franchise guy, and that's what Deshaun Watson is. If he has his head in the game and he's focused and he's playing the way that he played in Houston, you have a guy who can take you to the promised land, and that's my opinion. Absolutely, I agree. I love Deshaun Watson at Clemson, loved him with the Texans. Um, he missed a lot of time and had to deal with all this off-the-field drama this year. Giving him a full offseason – you know, to remove himself from the drama, stay out of trouble, just keep his head down and focus and and be ready for next year and for the team to build around him. Man, a full off season and being able to get ready, a training camp, preseason, going into next year, the Browns are going to be feeling really good and have a real good opportunity to, to make some noise next year. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. I agree because I feel like Cleveland is going to be one of the teams this year that are going to have the biggest offseason free agency wise because they know that they have that guy and they're confident in Watson. And boy, man, if you put more weapons and and put a defense behind him, look out. Yeah, absolutely. Big win for the Browns. Um Miles Garrett, 13 and a half sacks on the season, second most of his career. He's still, you know, an absolute disruptor. How about the Ravens, though? A tough loss. They fall to nine and five. The Bengals win, so the Ravens are now second place in the division. Man, I'm getting some serious deja vu to last year. When Lamar Jackson got hurt, they didn't expect it to be a you know season ending, and he never just got never got back. Same thing this year. They only expected him to miss a couple of weeks. Now they're talking about Lamar not being able to play in week 16. Um, they're, you know, they look like they, the Bengals are hitting on all cylinders right now. I believe they've won like six in a row. So, man, the Ravens are in danger of possibly even missing the playoffs. They need Lamar Jackson back badly, huh? Yes, they do. And, I mean, you know, their defense is what keeps them in these games. Yeah. You know? But, bro, I mean, we were hyping up Tyler Huntley as a good backup, as a decent backup, but he was even getting some talk about getting a starting opportunity somewhere in the league. I don't see it. I don't. And it, part of it is, though, a lack of weapons in Baltimore. They can't – they don't have really very good receivers. But they're not getting it done. Uh, they lose Devin Duvernay for the season with a broken bone in his foot in practice this week. So that just compounds the issue. They go and they claim Sammy Watkins off a of waiver, so he comes back. But not a lot of weapons around him. And without Lamar Jackson, I just don't think this is a playoff team. What do yeah. you think? Um. Yeah, they need Lamar, bro. He's the heart and soul of that team. And without him, I just don't think that they'll be able, be able to catch the Bengals or let alone, you know, anybody else in the AFC. 
So a big game in week 16, Christmas Eve, the 5-9 and nine Falcons with Desmond Ritter starting at the 9-5 and five Ravens. Tyler Huntley expected to start again. This is a massive, a must-win for the Ravens. You can't lose to Desmond Ritter and the Falcons. They have to find a way to win this game. You think they can do it? Ooh. Uh, no. I, or the Ravens, yeah. At home against the Falcons, you think they can find a way to win that? Yes, I do. Just because it's Devin Ritter's first start. I think it's his second start. I think he started this weekend. Oh. But, yeah, he's young. He's unproven. He didn't look that great on Sunday. Uh, so it's an opportunity for the Ravens to get a win they desperately need. They need Lamar back ASAP. How about this, bro? Some rumor. Uh, Benjamin Albright. One of the most well-connected insiders in the game. Some people like to hate on him and say he's not that good or he's biased or whatever. As a national media guy who covers the entire league, Benjamin Albright is a, as well-connected as Adam Schefter or Ian Rapport or any of these guys. He is my go-to insider in the NFL. He says, and tell me what you think, because is this injury, again, for a second year in a row, a Lamar Jackson injury late in the year, is this going to hurt his ability to get a long-term deal? And if that's so, do you think there's any chance that Lamar is going to, you know, ask to be traded? And Benjamin Albright says the Atlanta Falcons will be interested if Lamar Jackson's available. And my gut says that there's going to be like 10 teams or at least a handful of teams interested if Lamar Jackson's available in a trade. Yeah. Absolutely, but, you know, uh, I think that the Ravens have a lot of faith in him and, you know. Are you sure? <laughs> two years in a row, an injury at the same time, and it's going to derail their season two years in a row. Well, I mean, who else would you go get that's better? That's the, that's the issue, is that you really don't. You know, Tyler Huntley's proven he's not the guy, but – you know, I mean, what do they say? Avail availability is your best ability. And when you're a run for, you know, a, a runner like Lamar is, he can sling the ball with the best of them. But when you run the ball as much as he does, you take a lot of hits and that makes you more susceptible to injury risk. I mean, I love Lamar, but the Ravens have to be having some serious conversations, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I see what you're saying and. But and then I just, on top of it, Lamar has already said he wants that Deshaun Watson deal. He wants his money fully guaranteed. Well, is anybody from the league going to give him that? Yeah. Benjamin Albright was saying if the Ravens won't give him that, the Falcons will trade for him and give him that contract. Yeah, that'd be huge. Yeah. So interesting times in Baltimore. We'll see what happens. Um, do you like the addition of Sammy Watkins and how big of a loss is Devin Duvernay? I do. Um, Sammy Watkins is a, a pretty good, uh, pickup, but Devin Duvernay is a big loss, bro. Yeah. And Watkins was there in 2021, recorded 27 catches and a touchdown. I don't think Watkins is that good, but the Ravens need all the help they can get at the receiver position. And so we'll see. What happens going forward? Uh, the Saints at the Browns, another opportunity. I mean, the Browns are 6-8. and eight. If they take care of the Saints, they get to 7-8. and eight. I mean, if the Browns win out, they could get to 9-8. and eight. Yeah, I mean, that'd be crazy to think, man, that there are so many chances that could happen for these teams. So much more controversy and stuff like that, man. Yeah, it's the best time of year. They play, they host the Saints, which is a winnable game, but then they go on the road at the Commanders and at the Steelers. I think likely one of those is going to be a loss, probably the Commanders. So that would be their ninth loss, and I think that would knock the Browns out of the playoff contention. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. Starts against the Saints on Christmas Eve. Uh, let's go Saturday night. Really, the game of the weekend, a much hyped game. The eight and five Dolphins at the 10 and three Bills. Dolphins trying to sweep the Bills. 
and a pull within a game of the division lead and snap their two-game losing streak. The Bills can't afford a sweep, need every win they can get to ensure home field in the playoffs. The Dolphins lead 29-21 in the fourth quarter, but the Bills rally, tie the game, and kick the game-winning field goal as time expires to win 32-29 in snowy Buffalo. Um, how impressed were you? The Bills have been your team all season long since the preseason, since training camp. They're on pace to go 14-3 and like you predicted, and you predicted them to win the Super Bowl, right? Yes, I did. So at 11-3, and coming off a massive win over the Dolphins, how are you feeling about the Bills at this moment? Oh, I still believe in the Bills, and I'm going to keep my uh, prediction of the record of 14-3. to I don't think they lose any of the rest of their games, and they're going to go into the playoffs with the number one seed in the AFC and have home field advantage. And do you think that's mandatory if they're going to uh, win the AFC? They have Absolutely. to have that home field? Absolutely, because – I'm going to say what I say every week. You do not want to go into Arrowhead. Yeah. And keep an eye on the fucking Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Who are, uh, you know, I doubt they're, they're not, they can't go 14 and three, but they're red hot. So the Bills, you know huh? can't the whole time. Yeah. But they've proven they can go on the road and win in January, too. You know, they went into Tennessee, they went into uh, Vegas. They went into Arrowhead all last year. So uh, the Bills go to Chicago to take on the 3-11 and Bears. They should win that one pretty easily, take care of business, get the 12-3. and But then it gets more difficult. The Bills have to go to the Bengals on Monday night, week 17. Ooh. That's a massive game. That's uh, going to be game. That's going to be huge. Honestly, at this moment, I'm taking the Bengals to win that. Ooh, the Bengals. At home, and they're red hot. So that could be the Bills' fourth loss. They're week 18. They'll be at home against the Patriots, which should be winnable. So if the Bills are going to go 14-3, and three, that week 17 at the Bengals on Monday night is going to be a must-watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you, I'll be watching it for sure. Yeah. Um. For the Dolphins, I talked about this three weeks ago, bro. If you remember, I said, look out. Here comes a Dolphins losing streak. They're a streaky team. They do this. Their backs are up against it now. They were 8-3. Eight and, eight and three. Now they're 8-6. and six. Three-game losing streak, and they host the Green Bay Packers on Christmas Day at 1 p.m. The Packers are in must-win. They can't afford another loss if they're going to make the playoffs. The Packers are on their own two-game winning streak. How do you see this game going on Saturday, on Christmas Day, Sunday at 1 p.m.? Packers at Dolphins. Oh, man, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. But it's a must-win for Miami. Do you agree? Yeah, but it's an even more important – It's it's an even more important win for Green Bay. So is that who you trust more? Do you trust the Packers more going into Miami? I mean, it's not that I trust Packers. I trust Aaron Rodgers over Tua. Yes. And you think Aaron Rodgers is going to outperform Tua? Yes, I do. Are you worried a little bit about Tua? Has his – I mean, he played decently. He made some plays in Buffalo but couldn't get the win. How are you feeling about the Dolphins? I mean, they're on the verge. So if you're right and the Packers win – that's a four-game losing streak, and the Dolphins would be absolutely choking away their playoff appearance. Yeah, that's uh, it's crazy to think that they would be doing that. But I like Tua still. I just think, you know, it comes around coaching. Oh, so I'm starting to win you over on my take, huh? Yeah, because, you know, he just doesn't look like a head coach material to me. Did you see that video of Mike McDaniel uh, pr going into that Bills game? He was wearing a T-shirt that said, I wish it was colder or something like that, and dancing around, kind of making fun of the whole how snowy and cold it's going to be in Buffalo. Yep. And then he took that L, right? Yes. Bro, he's got Mark Trestman written all over him. I don't trust Mark McDaniel. I mean, Mike McDaniel 
at all. And uh, I think the Dolphins choke away and they miss the playoffs. That's my opinion. That'd be wild, man. And that would be basically like that organization just can't seem to get it right, bro. What would that remind you of? Would that remind you at all of the Cardinals last year? Absolutely. I mean, the Cardinals started off unbeaten for a while. Yep. So, and then I mean, just eight and three, and then they choke it away, you know, and they're healthy. They got Tyreek, Waddle, Tua, make it happen, but they're not. So, massive game. I can't wait for that game. That's one of the games of the week, and I can't wait for Packers at Dolphins Sunday, Christmas Day at 1 p.m. I couldn't ask for a better present than that game. And I agree with you. I think the Packers win that. Um, let's go to Sunday. Falcons at Saints. Uh, Desmond Ritter, the Falcons rookie quarterback, making his first career start, third-round pick out of Cincinnati. Saints jump out to a 14-0 lead and survive 21-18. Um, down three points, the Falcons convert fourth and five. Desmond Ritter had the Falcons in position to tie the game or take the lead. A pass to rookie Drake London, but he fumbles the ball. It's a costly turnover there that really cost the Falcons a chance to win that game. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. And you can't turn the ball over in those circumstances. No, Drake London, we like the guy, we like the talent, but you can't do that, you know? And he's still young. He'll he'll learn. What do you think of Desmond Ritter and his de- NFL debut? You know, I thought it was it was all right. I mean, it wasn't too impressive. Yeah, but he's, you know, it's his first career start. You're going to have growing pains. Uh, Do you still, do you believe in Desmond Ritter as a future starting quarterback in the NFL, or how do you see him? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's it's way too early to tell. I need to see more. Yeah. I need to see how. Trivia time, Dustin. Are you ready for this? Oh, okay. You always give me one every week. All right, I'm ready. All right. The Falcons-Saints rivalry overall in NFL history, Falcons and Saints. Who has won more head-to-head matchups, Falcons or Saints, against each other? Oh, I'm going to say Falcons. Okay, you're going Falcons. I would have said Saints, and I think that's like recency bias, but the Saints used to be a really bad team back in the day. This just goes to show you how good of a rivalry it's been. They're tied, 54 to 54. Oh, wow. Yeah, very good rivalry. And and everyone talks about how, you know, Aaron Rodgers has owned the Bears. The Bears-Packers rivalry is right there. I believe it's like one, one game separates it. You think about, you know, how long these rivalries have been going, and when they're so competitive like that, it's awesome to see, huh? Yeah. What did you think about, so the Falcons, you know, Marcus Mariota, and then he leaves the team after getting benched. Desmond Ritter taken in the third round. Now there's this rumor about the Falcons interested in Lamar Jackson. How do you see the Falcons' future and trying to figure out their quarterback position? Oh, man. Uh, kind of wide open, isn't it? Yeah, like I said, I – I I want to see more of Desmond Ritter. I want to see how he ends the season. And, you know, if he ends the season on a spark and they can, you know, get a couple good games out of him, then I'd say maybe he, he's the guy, you know. Um, but any time you have the chance to go get Lamar Jackson, go get him. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, would you have any problem paying Lamar fully guaranteed contract based on the injuries he's taken the last two years? That's another good question, man. That is, yeah, that is questionable. I mean, the talent's there. Yeah, the talent's there, and it's it's his play style, bro. It, it, it's the way he plays is why he gets injured so much. I think it can be a little fluky too, though, and I think that I, I would pay Lamar. I like Lamar. I think that you can win with him. He hasn't gone on a deep playoff run yet, but I think he is capable of it. You just got to surround him with talent. And I honestly, I don't think the Ravens have done a good enough job recently of surrounding him with playmakers. Do you? I mean, Uh, 
For example, they traded away Hollywood Brown, and at the time, we all said it was a mistake. Yeah, absolutely, because that's who his go-to was last year, and their chemistry was pretty damn good. Yeah, so we'll see. And, uh, yeah, the Falcons quarterback position wide open. We'll see what happens with that. Let's go Steelers at Panthers. Kenny Pickett, the rookie quarterback, out with a concussion. So Mitch Trubisky gets the start. Uh, the Steelers take a 21 to 7 third quarter lead and hang on to win 24 to 16 in Charlotte. Uh, Mitch Trubisky played very well, combines for 150 plus yards, one touchdown, no turnovers, but made some big plays, made some deep throws to his left, to his right. Uh, how did you see Tr- Mitch Trubisky perform in this game? Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. I mean, you know, for coming off the bench, it was a good performance. I mean, you know, again, he, he didn't turn the ball over. And Do that's you what matters. agree with me that the Steelers made too quick of a move to put Kenny Pickett in? And I think that if Mitch Trubisky started the full season or to this point, the Steelers would be in a much better position con- competing for a playoff spot. Do you agree with that? I do. And actually, man, they're 6 of 8 right now, bro. They're, they're another one of them teams still alive. Yep. But you know what pisses me off? They're going to go right back to Pickett. They're, Kenny Pickett is expected to start. He's cleared concussion protocol, and they're going back to Pickett to start Saturday night, Christmas Eve, against the 6-8 and eight Raiders at the 6-8 and eight Steelers. Man, I, the way Trubisky's been playing, I would be starting Mitch Trubisky. Do you think so, that's a mistake? I do. And so we talk about this all the time, like like where, you know, a quarterback change comes from, if it's from the head coach or something. To me, this seems like it's from the owner also because I think Mike Tomlin knows who gives him – who gives Pittsburgh the best chance to win. Yeah. I agree, and it's like it comes with ownership because the way Trubisky played against Carolina, he earned he's earned another start. And if Mike Tomlin was concerned about his uh, streak, his consecutive winning seasons, I think he starts Mitch Trubisky. That's why I agree with you. This is like an ownership thing, saying Trubisky's not the future. Kenny Pickett is, so that's more important, figuring out the future – than, than saving this season, sneaking into the playoffs potentially, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, reports out of Pittsburgh is Chubitsky is continuing to improve, and I hope that he gets another opportunity this offseason to compete for a starting spot somewhere else, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that'd be, that'd be cool to see. I mean, hey. You know what I'm about to say, and I think he's pretty decent. I mean, there's a spot open in Indianapolis, and he's yeah. not like he's not like one of them older veterans. I mean, he's been in the league, you know, for a little bit, but he's not you one can, of them. Yeah, you can sign him to a little deal, incentives based. You can keep Sam Ellinger and go draft a quarterback, and then you got three guys who you can play based on who's healthy and who's playing the best football, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we got to talk about rest in peace to Pittsburgh Steelers legendary running back Franco Harris. He was going to be honored and have his number retired on Saturday night, so the timing couldn't be worse. Unexpected uh, for Franco Harris to die. Uh, rest in peace. The the guy who was responsible for the immaculate reception, one of the greatest plays in NFL history, died three days before the 50-year anniversary of that play. Wow. Yeah, pretty How incredible. Um, Four-time four Super Bowl champion and nine-time Pro Bowler, so he's yep. definitely one of the greatest of all time running the football. Absolutely. Rest in peace to a legend. Uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer, four-time Super Bowl champ, absolute legend. And uh, the timing sucks, but, you know, at least we get to honor a, a great a great player. Mm-hmm. Um, so we – the seven and – week 16 will be the seven and seven Lions, who have won six out of their last seven, at the five and nine Panthers, led by quarterback Sam Darnold. Another opportunity – 
Man, I can't tell you the last time the Lions have been above 500. So this is a big game for the Lions, an opportunity to get to eight and seven. If they lose this, I'm going to come on here and sh- and hate on them and say this is the same old Lions losing the bad teams. This is a very winnable game. You expect the Lions to go into Carolina and get a big win, huh? Oh, boy. Let me say this real quick. Yeah. Lions win this game. Next to the 49ers, they are the most dangerous team in the NFL. What about the Packers, though? And that's what I'm telling the re- There's a reason I bring that up. Because I think the Lions beat the Panthers. And there's there's a good chance they beat the Bears. So it could be the 9-7 and seven Lions potentially taking on the, what, 8-8 eight and eight Packers. And the winner goes to the playoffs. In week 18, Lions at Packers. Absolutely. I just can't remember who won their first game. Um, I'm pretty sure. Let me pull that up real quick. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Detroit did. Okay. So how would that tiebreaker go? So let me pull it up here because um, it goes then by conf- or, uh, division record. Detroit, so, might have, huh? Detroit might have that division record over Green Bay. Uh, it's very close. It's going to come down to – so the Lions are 3-1 and one in the division. The Packers are 2-2. Two and two. Mm. Um, The Lions play the Bears and the Packers. Two division games left. The Packers play the Vikings and the Lions. Two division games left. Mm, that Viking so, area. both teams, it's win or take all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't afford a single loss. You got to finish. So, it's win. You got to win out. So, at, at seven and seven, the Lions can't afford a loss. And so, they need to take care of business pan- at the Panthers versus the Bears at the Packers. Okay. Can we admit, though, Alex, they've exceeded your expectations so far? Oh, absolutely. I never would have thought the Lions would be above 500 at any point this year. Um, I never thought that they would win potentially eight or nine games. So they're, you know, definitely performing better than I thought. And a very winnable game in Carolina. So, but I'm not going to, the story isn't written yet. And I've watched, you know, so many Lions games over the years and the Lions history is they've been in this position before but lost games they should have won so they have to continue this you know it's been a great story to this point to get to seven and seven but it has to continue right absolutely and you know hats off to Dan Campbell bro I mean before this six game winning streak he wasn't even sure if he was going to have a job next season yeah, no, um, great hats off to Dan Campbell and a great job by Jared Goff of keeping this team afloat. Goff is very responsible for, you know, the Lions winning games recently. And uh, we'll see if they can continue it um, at Carolina on Christmas Eve. Raiders at Steelers, Kenny Pickett versus Derek Carr. How do you see this game going in Pittsburgh Saturday night, Christmas Eve? You know what, bro? I'm going to have to go with the Raiders. I think they they got lucky and knocked off a – The Patriots? Yeah. That was off. incredible. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. But that was unexpected. And we've buried the Raiders so many times this year, and they just somehow find a way to hang on and stay in the hunt. Yeah, and that's crazy to think, too. We were thinking, yeah. oh, Josh McDaniel, you know, this could be one and done for him. Yeah. And then guess what? He, they rally, bro, and they and they're still alive for a shot at the last wild card. So let's say they can steal a win over the in Pittsburgh over the Steelers, but that still leaves them with two tough home games: Week 17, Week 18. They're home against the 49ers and home against the Chiefs. Oh, so. Raiders are up against it, but it starts, you know, it starts Saturday night. You got to take care of business, go into Pittsburgh and silence the terrible towels and get a big road win over Kenny Pickett. Please do. I hate the terrible oh. towels. Sorry. Right. 
Um, let's go Eagles at Bears. The Eagles jump out to a 17 to 6 third quarter lead and hang on to win 25 to 20. A much closer game than than most of us would have expected. Um, and Justin Fields in the process sprains his shoulder and is going to miss week 16 at the Cowboys. How about that? You mean Jalen Hurts? Yeah, who did I say? Justin Fields. Yeah, my bad. Jalen Hurts, the Eagles quarterback, suffers a sprained shoulder. Gardner Minshew is going to start at the Cowboys, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, most importantly is Hurts getting healthy, being ready to go for the playoffs, right? Yeah. And um, I wouldn't play him if I was – Philly, is he for no, sure? Rest him until the playoffs if you have to. Yeah, absolutely. They're likely to get that first round by. So um, rest him and uh, have Hurts ready to go when the playoff, you know, when the playoff games start. But play Minshew the rest of the season if you have to, you know. Uh, even if you lose out, let's look at the Eagles' schedule here real quick. I think they lose to the Cowboys in Dallas, right? Do you agree? Oh, Cowboys, yeah. Without Jalen Hurts, they don't win that game. Minshew can play well, but I don't think it's enough to beat Dallas, right? No, but although Dallas did just come off of a, a loss against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, I'll say this. If the Cowboys aren't ready to go in this game, then they don't deserve to make the playoffs. So they better win on uh, in this game on uh, Saturday against the Eagles. I'm going to be watching this game. That's a big game. Cowboys should win that. Then the Eagles host the Saints and host the Giants. And, uh, yeah, just play Minshew, man. No need to risk Hurts' health anymore and, you know, be ready to go come playoff time, right? Absolutely, man. Christmas Eve games almost make you want to miss your family outings. Oh, man, I, I'm going to be glued to the television all weekend. I don't care what's going on. The family can take a back seat to all this good football action. <laughs> <laughs> um, some high praise in the, after this game uh, from Darius Slay, Eagles uh, star corner. He says, Justin Fields, so Jalen Hurts the MVP candidate, balling out this year, right? Yeah. One of the best quarterbacks in football. This is what Darius Slay says. He says, quote, Justin Fields reminds me of Hurts, but a little bit bigger and faster. The kid is, spe is special, and he's going to light the NFL up soon. That's very high praise, huh? Absolutely. And, bro, he's right. Look, I'm not a Bears fan. I'm actually, you know, one of the people that, you know, kind of. Hates on the Bears. I know. You can say Yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a little bit. But, yeah. uh. They got their guy, bro. And let me tell you, you put weapons around that man, he is probably the most special quarterback I've seen in a long time. Bro, I mean, he becomes the third quarterback in NFL history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. Only Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson have done that. I don't think we knew. I mean, did you? You follow college football closer than I did. Did we know he was this special running the football in college? I thought he was more so a passer yeah and see that's what that's what surprised me was seeing the legs that he had because I mean at Ohio State he I mean he had dynamic guys though bro on the outside that he could throw to that's why yeah. you see more of his arm when he was playing for the Buckeyes than the Bears currently right now unfortunately you know and, bro and I'll go ahead and say it Ohio State had much better weapons than the Bears have. Yeah, yeah. That that's that was my point was we were able to see what kind of arm he had because he had the special talent at receiver at, yeah. at Ohio State. But in Chicago, he has to use his legs to be able to make plays and make up for the lack of talent on the outside. The lack of talent, nobody can get open. When they do get open, they drop the football. You know, you give Valus Jones one touch and he fumbles the ball. You know, I was saying it all offseason. The Bears had done a shit job of surrounding fields with talent. So I was worried for him. And the fact that he's been this successful running the ball 
with no weapons really goes to show you how special he is. And I can't wait to see what he looks like with some real talent around him, you know? Absolutely, bro. He's going to tear it up by storm. So if I was a Bears fan, um, I'd be excited with our quarterback. I mean, you know, you, you can't be excited by the front office because they don't know what they're doing. But I would be excited for what the future holds at the at the signal call at the signal calling position. I agree, and uh, but I mean, all that being said, I'm kind of worried about. I know it's early, but they have done such a shit job surrounding Fields with weapons. And if you look at Ryan Pohl's history, the Bears GM, it's not very good at the weapons position. Um. I'm not sold on any of the guys he brought in this year. Equinamia St. Brown sucks, in my opinion. He's wide receiver five on every roster in football, any competent one. Whoa. Dante Pettis sucks. Valus Jones was a bust of a pick. And he traded for Chase Claypool, who hasn't done anything in Chicago so far, and Nikhil Harry, who – hasn't done much anywhere in the NFL. I mean, all that isn't very good. Do you agree? Well, I mean, I'm always going to stick up for the Equinemius St. Brown and the Chase Claypool guys. And, you know, there's a reason behind that. But have they? Yeah, under- but they, they haven't really produced. No, no. They have underperformed. And that I will agree with. And you got to make some moves this offseason or it's going to be and the same real- old thing. Real quick, let me uh, go through this list and tell me who stands out to you. When Ryan Poles was on the Chiefs, I know that he didn't have direct input on these picks, but he was there. He probably had some. Chiefs wide receiver picks while Ryan Poles was on, on in the franchise. Cornell Powell, McCole Hardman, Traymond Smith, Jehu Chesin, which no one's even heard of, Demarcus Robinson, Tyreek Hill, Chris Conley, Devin Wiley, Jonathan Baldwin, Dexter McCluster. You've Does never any heard of those from... names st- stand out to you besides Tyreek Hill. I mean, you know, Powell and uh, Hardman. Hardman. I can't, yeah. Demarcus and Robinson. You don't know Jehu Chesson, bro? No, he he doesn't do anything. From Michigan? Yeah, what's he done? No, nothing really, but uh, I like Dexter McCluster. Didn't he do something for a minute? Not really. As a wide receiver, he was a special teams guy and, yeah. and like a turned running back. Okay, yeah, I know. Uh, well, how about Jonathan Baldwin? <laughs> Who is that? He was a Chiefs wide receiver, a first-round pick. Oh, yeah, that guy I don't remember. Exactly. I remember him, but he sucked. So, you know, it's a little bit worrisome. And so I hope we're going to have all the cap room in the world. We're going to have all the picks in the world. I hope, fingers crossed, that Ryan Poles does a much better job this offseason of bringing in talent around Justin Fields because I'm not sold on Kyler Gordon, the corner we took. I'm not, you know, Valus Jones might not even make the team next year. He's terrible and uh how about this the bears uh traded away both khalil mack and roquan smith this year they both made the pro bowl yeah you know not great there either so i you know i'm worried about i don't know that ryan poles was the right hire and i don't know that matt eberflus was the right hire either i'm not sold on luke getsy as our offensive play caller i love justin fields and we'll see what happens this offseason. This is a massive offseason for the Bears. Okay, so do you think the McCaskills, that's the owner, right? The McCaskies, yes. The McCaskies, excuse me. Um, You think they would put pressure on Pools to get weapons or no? There's going to be pressure on him from the organization. Yes, they have to. Justin Fields is the franchise quarterback. He's shown you a ton of special. So you have to, with all this cap room, you have to spend it and all these draft picks, and you have to be aggressive and try your damnedest to surround him with a lot more talent going into next year. 
if you struggle, if you strike out, then hopefully we fire his ass ASAP because we can't, you know, but do I think the McCaskies are going to put pressure on him? Man, the, he sold the McCaskies on the rebuild when they hired him. They wouldn't have hired him if, if they didn't want to rebuild. So my concern with the McCaskies is do they want to win? Or are they con- or are they comfortable just tanking and and taking their time while losing? You know what I mean? They're still making their money. But you can't take your time when you have a talent like Fields, bro. You just can't. You can't. But I mean, uh, can you sit back here and say that the McCaskies surrounded M- Mitch Trubisky with enough talent to be successful on defense? On defense, but did they on offense, which is more important to the quarterback? Weapons, nope. O line. Uh, did they did they fire the coach soon enough once they once it was well established that he was incompetent, Matt Nagy? Nope, they kept him nope. a little bit. They should have. Exactly. So, do I trust the McCaskies? No, I don't. And they seem like a cheap or a cheap owner group ownership. So, uh, we'll see on the Bears, but hopefully, you know, Justin Fields is a super bright spot. So hopefully, we build around him and and it get a lot better going forward. Um, so we're both taking the Cowboys over Gardner Minshew and the Eagles, right? Yeah, even though Gardner's my boy. Yeah, Minshew should keep it a good game, but yeah, I think the Cowboys win that. Let's go Chiefs at Texans. The Chiefs have to win in overtime, 30-24, to 24, in a game that was surprisingly close. The Texans could have almost won this game. Texans could have almost beat the Cowboys two weeks ago. Um, do you think this is the Texans playing better football or teams just not taking them seriously at all? I think it's a, it's the Texans showing fight. Yeah. And also teams sleeping on them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, at least the Chiefs got the job done in the end. So did the Cowboys. Texans fall to 1-12-1, and 12 and 1, which has got to be like – among the worst records I've ever seen. One and twelve and one is just disgusting. <laughs> um, and uh, they f- play at the Titans on Christmas Eve. The Seahawks at the Chiefs on Christmas Eve. Are you? What's your thoughts on the Chiefs? They're eleven and three, kind of you know barely beating the Broncos, barely beating the Texans. Do you think the Chiefs beat the Seahawks on Saturday uh, at home? And, and and finally started to play some better football, or are they in a little bit of a slump here? I do, because I think it's important that they do play better football for the simple fact that you don't want to go into the playoffs barely winning your games. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see if they play better football. If not, the Seahawks can sneak up and, and steal a win in Arrowhead. So we'll see how they do. What are your thoughts? You know, the Titans are at home against the Texans. They should be able to get this win, but rookie Malik Willis getting the start. Um, I was really high on Malik Willis coming out of Liberty in the draft. You you liked him too, right? Oh, yeah. So you excited to see Malik Willis get his, uh, I believe, his first start, or maybe not his first start, but get some action against the Texans? Yeah, I'm excited, and – I'm excited to see the big arm he has because, man, does he got a massive arm. Do you think Malik Willis can get the Titans into the playoffs? Oh, now that's a different question. Yeah, but they should be able to win this game. Let's pull up their schedule here real quick. Titans, because the Jags are hot on their tails. Uh, the Titans should be able to beat the Texans at home, but then Malik Willis is going to have his hands full. A home game on Thursday – night against the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a big-ass game, Week 17. And then Week 18, probably for all the marbles, Titans at Jags. Ooh. And yeah. that could be Malik Willis against Trevor Lawrence. That could be some must-watch football right there. Yeah, absolutely, man. The, the What was supposed to be a generational guy, which I think he could still be, uh, you know, versus an up-and-coming star. Yeah, yep. Going to be great football. I got some pride riding on the Malik Willis train because I was talking to a Panthers uh, front office guy this offseason, 
talking up Malik Willis. So I need Malik Willis to be a good player, and I think he will be. So if he can lead the Titans into the playoffs, I'll be doing jumping jacks if that can happen. Yeah. Um, Cowboys at Jags. The Cowboys jump out to a 27 to 10 third quarter lead, but blow the lead. The Jags rally to force overtime and they win on a Rayshon Jenkins pick six in overtime to beat the Cowboys 40 to 34. How about that win, huh? Yeah, pretty good win, man. And okay, so we're on this game, right? So can I uh, say what I have to say about this? Yeah, go for it. I've been waiting for this moment, bro. I had so that? much faith. I, I've had so much faith in Dak Prescott. And to me, he's the most in, inconsistent quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, he is. He has some inconsistencies. I agree. And in my opinion, I don't think he's the guy who's going to take Dallas over the hump. The thing is, so he got that one playoff win. Was that in Seattle? Like a, or maybe it was in Dallas, but a major playoff win over Russell Wilson and the Seahawks a couple of years ago, and it got everyone's attention. And he's been riding on that ever since, and got that massive contract extension. But do I trust Dak Prescott and the Cowboys to win a playoff game, especially if they're on the road? No, I don't. I don't think they win a playoff game this year. And they lost a home playoff game last year, the Niners, remember? Yeah, and I mean, you throw a pick six, that was for the for the whole game, right? That was what? For the game? Yeah, it was the game yeah. winner. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean, like, I just don't trust him, bro. And, I mean, he has a talent. We can all see it. It's just he doesn't show it. Or, yeah, you know? it's all about consistency. You yeah. know, he's got the defense. He's got weapons, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see. It's a tough, real tough loss for the Cowboys. A uh, game they should have won. A huge win for Jacksonville. Um, and credit to the Jags. I mean, you're down 27 to 10 in the third. It would be easy to just, you know, wrap it up. Take the L, move on. This isn't our year. But the Jags kept fighting. And, bro... As down as you are on Dak, if you remember going back to week one, I was really high on Trevor Lawrence and thought this was going to be a special year. And there's a chance the Jags can still make the playoffs, right? Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say on here. I just wanted to give a shout-out to the Trevor Lawrence haters who yeah. I see every day, and it just drives me crazy. But this dude no. is – Yeah. He's playing. special, the talent's there. It's obvious. I, I, absolutely. And, bro, in my opinion, Doug Peterson is is the guy he needs. Well, he's such a major upgrade over Urban Meyer. You know, that alone is huge. And then um, if anyone is – so let's talk to the Trevor Lawrence haters real quick. If you're seriously trying to act like – that Trevor Lawrence is a finished product right now, then I don't know what you're talking about. And if you think that he's a bust, did you watch him play at all in college? Because Trevor <laughs> Lawrence has had that it factor since day one. I mean, I, wasn't he winning as a freshman at Clemson? Yeah, and uh, for those who don't know, I'm going to throw a, a little bit of stats out there. You know, Trevor Lawrence was, I think, if not the – Maybe not, but I think he might have been the highest rated prospect in college football history, I think. Yeah. I mean I, I could he be can wrong. Make every throw, underrated athleticism with his legs. He can do it all. And he's got that clutch factor too. We've seen him do it. Well and um so I I always get a kick out of people that want to act like they know a player, if a player is good or not, in year one or year two when they're still developing, right? There's all this talk about Justin Fields can't throw the football and Trevor Lawrence doesn't isn't that guy. And it's like, how do you know? Because we don't know. And we cover the league. We watch every single game. How do you know something that we don't? Because there, Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields are still developing. Same with Zach Wilson. Same with 
you know, any of these guys, we're still learning about Joe Burrow, right? So how anyone can sit there and say they know what a player is in year one, year two, year three even, is wild to me. Yeah, We're still finding out about Dak Prescott. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, for you, for you to be able to, especially somebody like you, if you think a player's not good, you're going to call them out. You know? Yeah. Hey, this guy just didn't sh- uh, show us what he's capable of. You know? Yep. Uh, but for the simple fact that Fields is still developing, Lawrence is still developing, and, uh, you know, Wilson and stuff, man, look out, bro. It's going to be so much fun when these guys do. Well, I'm going to throw a quick little analogy at you. It's the same people, right, that want to call Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields a bust. It's the same people that are saying, Josh Rosen never got a fair chance, right? <laughs> I mean... Like, I'm people, like, but I'm not sitting here saying that Lawrence and Fields are a bust. Yeah. I mean, Rosen had opportunity after opportunity and never took advantage of it. And that's what it's all about, right? Taking advantage of opportunity. Absolutely. And not everyone gets the same amount of opportunity as others. So when you get it, you don't know how little it might be. If Tom Brady didn't, you know, have success with the Patriots in year one, he might have never gotten another opportunity. Mm-hmm. So it's all about take. you know, if Tony Romo didn't have success year one when he took over for Bledsoe uh, as a starter, then then he would have never gotten an opportunity. It's about what you do with your opportunity. And so, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. Don't listen to the haters. You can't say that a player is or isn't uh, in year one, year two. You have to wait, let them develop, and then see. Uh, yeah. Same shit with Trey Lance. Everyone's trying to, you know, say Trey Lance is a bust, and we can't say that yet. I try not to listen to the haters, but bro, it's it's hard when you are a person who does nothing but watch the game, and they try to test your intelligence. It's kind of hard to to not like, you know, go go crazy on them sometimes. Well, and you're well within your right to call them out and say, you know, my go to is the hashtag Watch More Football. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, let's go to, um, so uh, bad news for Jacksonville. They lose starting left tackle. Cam Robinson suffers a torn meniscus out for the season. Oh, so that hurts, but they do have second 2021 second round pick tackle Walker Little can fill in so we'll see how he does in this opportunity yeah absolutely um oh Trayvon Walker's not playing Sunday either yep Trayvon Trayvon Walker so um Jags well they played tonight by the way Uh, yeah duh tonight sorry six and eight Jags at the seven and seven Jets tonight uh Zach Wilson gets the start against Trevor Lawrence how do you see this game going tonight? Oh, man, two young stars going head-to-head. Uh, yep, in MetLife Stadium in New York. Big game. I mean, a playoff game for both teams. We get the playoffs early tonight. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And we're we're going through a blizzard right now, so there's it's going to be fun, man. I got, I got a college bowl game to watch right next to a uh, NFL game, so it's going to be a blast. Absolutely. Um, who are you picking? J- Jags at Jets. You know what? Because they have to go to MetLife, I'm going to go with uh, the Jets. All right. Because they fucking lost to the Lions, I'm not picking them ever again this year. Give me the Jags to beat the Jets. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Do you like my reasoning there? Yes. You can't even beat the Lions and help Alex sound smart. Screw you, Jets. I'm going Jacksonville. Um, so, And then Trevor Lawrence is greater than Zach Wilson. Give me the Jets tonight. Absolutely. Speaking of the Lions and Jets, Mike White out with ribs injury. So Zach Wilson gets a start. With Zach Wilson, I expected the Jets to get a big home win and snap this ridiculous Lions streak they got going on. 
The Lions take a late 20 to 17 lead, but kicker Greg Zerline, Greg the Leg or Legatron, whatever you want to call him, misses the game tying 58 yard field goal as time expired. And the Lions get a big road win, 20 to 17, to keep their hot streak alive. Um, credit to Jared Goff, bro. He continues to protect the football. No turnovers once again. That's huge. I mean, that right there is a big difference. And then at the same time, he's finding a way to convert third downs and keep drives alive. You know, Goff is playing some some solid football lately. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, how impressed are you with the Lions getting this win in New York? I mean, uh, you know, is this one of the better wins for the season for Detroit? It is, man, because of the simple fact that they needed it. Yeah. You know, um, and you've been all over the Lions all year. This is the ultimate question. Will they make the playoffs? See, man, it's it's so hard because I'm also a big fan of Rodgers, and if it comes down to that game, give you know, give me Rodgers over golf all day long. Yeah, well, that's the quarterback situation. Give me the, your team's prediction. Is it Packers are better than the Lions, or is it just simply the quarterbacks? Quarterbacks, because overall team, I think Detroit's better. Wow. All right. But, I mean, if Goff continues to play at this level, do you, do you think he can? I mean, it's what? Where is that game? Is that in Lambeau? Oh, yeah. Lions are not winning that game, bro. So, go ahead. It's been a fun year. The Lions have overachieved. They've done better than any of us thought. The Lions are not making the playoffs. That's my last stand. I know I've been hating on the Lions all year. There's no way in hell the Lions are making the playoffs. They're not winning that game in Lambeau. I'm sorry. Oh, bro. And you agree. You're not picking the Lions to go into Lambeau. Yeah, um, probably not, but they could shock us, bro. I have this little thing in my heart all season long that's been telling me this is a whole different Detroit ball, ball team, bro. Yeah, but that little thing is in your heart. It's not in your head. It's not your brain telling you that. That's your heart telling you that. That's, that's a big difference. You're not going to go to the – go put 500 – you're not going to go put $5,000 on the Lions to make the playoffs, are you? Probably not, no. No. So, yeah, uh, the Lions story has been special. Can they keep it up and go into Carolina and get a big win? I think they can. You know, the biggest story is can the Lions finish the season with a winning record? If they can do that, that's a hell of an accomplishment right there, right? Yeah. Let me say this, though. If somehow they manage to get in, and you're going to hate this and call me crazy. Yeah, I already know what you're going to say, and you are crazy. But let me tell you, they get in the playoffs, bro, they're the most dangerous team in the playoffs, in the whole no. NFL. No, the most dangerous <laughs> team in the playoffs is the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals. Bro, do you not remember when Eli Manning took a 9-7 and seven that's Giants. fine, but I've seen the Lions in the playoffs. They do not play well. There's a Bro, reason. It's a reason a whole, the Lions haven't won a playoff game since 1993. It's a whole different culture, bro. Whole different <laughs> culture. I don't give a damn. I mean, so let's let's do a little practice. Let's say they get in as a seven seed, which they're not going to. But then they have to go to the 49ers. Are you telling me the Lions are going to go to the 49ers and get a win in the playoffs? They're peaking at the right time, bro. I might call an upset there. Yeah, they can peak wherever they want. They're not going to go into San Francisco in January. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go Cardinals-Broncos, a glorified preseason game. As the 4-9 and nine Cardinals without Kyler Murray – take on the 3-10 and 10 Broncos without Russell Wilson. It was the Colt McCoy versus the Brett Rippon show. Even Colt McCoy suffers a concussion and gets replaced by Trace McSorley. What is this, college football? We got Trace McSorley against Brett Rippon? I mean, hey, it's okay. I love it. 
the uh who won this game? The Broncos win 24-15. I didn't watch a second of this game. I mean, I watched the highlights just so I'd know what I was talking about, but this is a glorified preseason game. It doesn't get much worse than this, does it? No. Um, I mean, you know, and speaking of the Broncos, real quick, bro, uh, rest in peace to Ronnie Hillman. Yes. R.I.P. Ronnie Hillman, Super Bowl winning running back, only 31 years old, bro. Yeah. Can I say it on here? Can I say F cancer? Yeah, fuck cancer, bro. Yeah, man. We live in an unfortunate, you know, society where, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but they have a cure and won't give it to us. It's, it's pretty sad. Well, there's big money in people being sick, you know, and cancer treatment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hopefully, you know, uh, it gets better and we can do a better job of, of beating cancer in the future. Uh, you know, and we'll see. Um, JJ Watt, you know, I mean, a couple of years ago, everyone wrote JJ Watt off, said he was done. It's time to retire. JJ Watt records three sacks in this game, nine and a half sacks on the season. That's the most for JJ Watt in a season since 2018. Wow. He's had, he's fallen kind of under, the radar. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he's trying to get to double digit sacks this year on a bad Cardinals team. So yeah, hopefully wow. he can get on a better team next year and be competing for playoffs, you know? Yeah, because he's one of those guys who definitely deserves a championship, bro. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Sunday, Christmas, four and 10 Broncos at the four and 10 Rams. Who cares? <laughs> Give me the Rams. <laughs> um, yeah. And then. Yeah. Go ahead. Give me Baker over Brett. Yeah, exactly. Um, Christmas night, a big game. You know, a, a must win for the Bucks. A six and eight Bucks must win at the four and ten Cardinals. I'm gonna be watching it Christmas night. Uh, I think the Bucks take care of business. Get a, a must win against the Cardinals. Looking expected to start Trace McSorley. So if Tampa Bay can't win this, then they don't deserve the playoffs, right? I mean, that's true, bro, but could look, can you believe this is the first time Tom Brady has lost eight games in his career? Wow, I didn't know that, but I believe it. And, I mean, we're going to talk more about the Bucks coming up, but they're struggling a little bit, and they have to start playing much better football if they're going to do anything in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Brady admitted it himself he's like we have to get the offense going because you're not going to win very many games in the national football league if you can't score yeah exactly so we'll see if they can get it going let's go patriots at raiders uh one of the craziest games i've ever seen the raiders lead 17 to 3 at halftime the patriots rally to take a 24 17 lead late fourth but then after the raiders tie the game Jacoby Myers tries a very risky lateral that is caught by Chandler Jones and returns at 48 yards for the game-winning touchdown after stiff-arming Mac Jones to the ground. Never seen an ending like that one, have you? No, bro. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> I could just imagine that locker room with Bill Belichick, all these mess-ups on special teams. You had mentioned it to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the Patriots have to be feeling kind of beat down at this point. You know, uh, Bill Belichick's calling card is is smart football, is not stupid mental mistakes. His teams don't usually beat themselves. And, bro, they've beat themselves three or four games this year with stupid shit. And, and you know, it, to me, it points to coaching. Like, they're not a very talented team on paper. But the coaching has been worse than the talent, in my opinion. The coaching's been really bad. Matt Patricia should never be calling offensive plays. And uh, they need to make changes. You know, I think Mac Jones can be the guy going forward. I think they've got a good running back in Ramondre Stevenson. They've got some good pieces. But they've got to get better coaching and more discipline. And this is rare to see out of a Bill Belichick coach team. Absolutely, but see, that's where we differ, bro. I don't know about Mac Jones, man. I think Mac Jones can do it. Mac Jones had him in position to win this game. They should have won this game. 
but stupid mistakes cost him. Um, Mac Jones is still young again. I'll say the same thing we say about Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson and these guys. We don't know about Mac Jones yet. He's still developing. And it would help Mac Jones a lot if you gave him an offensive play caller that wasn't fucking Matt Patricia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Defensive coordinator calling offensive plays. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. Yeah, it's, it doesn't work. And so um, massive win for the Raiders, but stupid loss for the Patriots. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. Um, and uh, it doesn't get any easier. As Christmas Eve, Saturday, the 10-4 and four Bengals at the 7-7 seven and seven Patriots. Bengals are red hot. Any chance the Patriots cool them off? No, bro. Uh, I, Bengals big. I disagree, Bengals big. If any, if any game the Patriots are going to be pissed off and want to fix shit, it's going to be after that loss. Give me the Patriots at home. Okay. The Bengals are bound to come back down to earth at some point. They're not a 13 and 4 team. They are a 12 and 5 or 11 and 6 team, but you know, I mean, we'll see. I might be, you know, I keep picking the Patriots. They keep, you know, making me look stupid, but give me the Patriots one more time. Bro, the Bengals are if they're balling, but they got down 17 nothing against the Bucks. So, and the Bengals and, are beatable too. They are, but what does good teams do? They come back yeah. and make find a way to win the game. Yeah, they do. Um, and we'll see. You know, we'll see if they can get it done in Foxborough in December, late December, Christmas time. It's always tough to go into Foxborough. So Absolutely. we'll see what happens. Um, Titans at Chargers. The Chargers win 17-14 on a game-winning 43-yard field goal by Cameron Dicker. Uh, Justin Fields with an unbelievable throw to Mike Williams to get him into field goal range. You see that throw? Yeah, yeah, nice throw. Um, you know, the Chargers get to 8-6. and six. I want you to call it. Is this the year the Chargers finally make the playoffs or not? Ooh. To me, it depends on what Miami does. I so think the Chargers are eight and six. They should beat the Colts. Man, their their last three games are pretty easy. At the Colts, that's winnable. Home against the Rams, very winnable. At the Denver Broncos, and Russell Wilson might not even play. Okay, yeah. With that remaining on their schedule, bro, absolutely, they're gonna make the playoffs. I think so too. I think they I think they likely go 10 and 7. They might lose a game in here that they're not supposed to. Maybe they lose to the Colts on Monday night. Yeah, I'll probably be sleeping during that game. <laughs> so we'll see. Um but we'll see if we if they can get into uh, the uh playoffs. Titans lose Ryan Tannehill for the season with an ankle injury. Tough blow to Tennessee, huh? Yeah. Very tough blow. I mean, we don't know what Willis can do yet, and he has he is a big arm kid. But when you're looking, you know, because you're probably going to win the AFC South, in my opinion. So uh, when you you're going to need a type of guy like Ryan Tannehill. Um, I'm rooting for the Titans. I because of Malik Willis. I want to see Malik Willis. Uh, get this team into the playoffs. And that's no easy task as they're going to have to beat the Cowboys and Jags week 17, week 18. Uh, they It starts with beating the Texans on Saturday, which they should do. So that's going to be a big game. And then we'll see how Malik Willis does against Dak Prescott and Trevor Lawrence. Those are two big-time matchups, you know? Yep, absolutely. So I'm going to be rooting for the Titans hard. The key is two things. Derrick Henry needs to absolutely carry the offense. And Malik Willis, protect the football while using your legs when you can, right? Yes. No, no turnovers for Malik, hopefully. Um, so I got the Titans beating the Texans. Chargers at Colts. Matt Ryan bench. So Nick Foles is going to start on Monday night against the Chargers. Any chance, you know, Nick Foles gets a win or you think the Chargers win that? 
Um, I think it's going to be the Chargers, bro. <laughs> Nick Foles is awful. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen Nick Foles in a while, so we'll see what he's got. But I agree, he hasn't looked any good recently. Um, Bengals at Bucks. The Bengals, the Bucks actually jump out to a seventeen nothing first half lead, but the Bengals take advantage of the turn of multiple turnovers in the second half, rally to win 34-23. That's part of the reason why the Bengals came back and won this game, bro, is turnovers. Tom Brady turned the ball over four times. Yeah, that's that's not like Tom Brady. No, you can't do that and win. Um, four turnovers, two picks, two fumbles lost. Uh, the Bengals take the AFC North division lead. Do you think they give it back at any point, or do you think the Bengals are going to win the AFC North uh, for what the second year in a row, or yeah, yeah, right. Yep, I think the Bengals uh win it. Did they win the division last year? Oh uh, yes, they did. So that was a home playoff game against the Raiders, right? Yep, that was yeah. their first time winning the division since I, I, I want to say. God damn it. I dropped my phone for a second. All right, there we go. Um, What were you saying again? Oh, so I was going to look that up. Because I need to know that. Yeah, because remember, the Ravens didn't make the playoffs last year, and, and neither did Cleveland. They did win the AFC North. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I was thinking... Yeah, you're right. So they won the division. So they're looking to do it again the second year in a row. And they're red hot. Um, they've won six games in a row. Their last loss, if you remember, was to the Browns on Monday Night Football. Remember that? Yeah, and they got smoked. Yep. So um, let's look here. So a big win in Tampa Bay. They stay red hot. They get to 10-4 and four at the Patriots. A game the Bengals should win, but give me the Patriots. Um, yeah, they're likely to win the division again if they take care of business. Um, and then a massive game for the Bucs at the Cardinals, which the Bucs should win, and then we'll see what happens in that division. But, I mean, nobody in that division scares you. You know, the Saints, the uh, Panthers, and the Falcons, right? Like, none of those teams scare you. No, no. I guess, I mean, Panthers at Bucks, week 17, that's going to be a big game. If the Bucks win that, they should win the division. Yeah. Uh, I let's, let's go Sunday night football, a massive game after tying two weeks ago. It was a winner-take-all on Sunday Night Football, Giants at Commanders. I was taking the Commanders. I didn't think the Giants, you know, were serious with, you know, and I trusted Taylor Henneke and, and the Commanders, but the Giants came ready to play. Credit to Brian Dable and the Giants coaching staff. The Giants were more mentally prepared to win that game. Do you agree? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, I agree. I mean, in D.C., I expected the Commanders to be ready to play. Kayvon Thibodeau brought it. He dominated the game. He had a strip sack, fumble recovery, return for touchdown. That was huge. He was making plays all game, as well as Aziz Ojolari. The Giants' D-line was nasty. Forced four fumbles. And, um, and what do we say about the Giants? How do they have success? Daniel Jones doesn't turn the ball over, which he did. And Saquon Barkley carries the offense, which he goes for 120 combined yards and a touchdown, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good performance. So uh, a very impressive road win for the Giants in D.C. Um, Taylor Henneke, in my opinion, struggled. He you know, he was doing enough to keep him in the game, but two major fumbles lost and some penalties, and the commanders couldn't overcome that, you know? 
Yep. Uh, yeah, it's uh again, turnovers, bro. Turn turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. What did you think? You said you didn't like some of the officiating in this game. Okay, yeah. So that last penalty on Terry McLaren, uh, McLaurin was absolutely egregious. Yeah, because he pointed to the official to say, am I good? And then the, the, the official said, like, yeah, you're good. And then threw the flag. That was weird. Yeah, that right there pissed me off. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm not going to lie. That doesn't look good for the NFL. That makes people who don't watch it on a random basis be like, this game is rigged. So, I mean, a lot of former players were upset with it, Mark Slareth being one of them. If you're the NFL and you are talking about transparency and wanting to, you know, show everybody that you're not throwing games or messing with the outcome of games, shouldn't that ref have to do a post-game interview and explain himself? Absolutely. And they don't, right? The refs just get to hide and do a post-game report that, is very undetailed, you know? It's like, what the hell? Like, they should have to face the, the media and the cameras, too, you know? I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Yep, I but agree. That, to me, was a minor detail, in my opinion. I'll tell you why. Because even if they scored that touchdown, they were going to have to have a two-point conversion. And at the end of the day, the Giants outplayed the Commanders. The Giants were the better team on Sunday night. Do you agree with that? Um, I I do, yes. And then real quick, so we've gone back and forth on this. From Ron, I, I, I got to get this off my chest. This is why I do not like Ron Rivera being a head coach. I don't. He the commanders need to move on from him, and I think he sucks, frankly. I, I do. I think he's a hell of a defensive coordinator, but he's not a head coach, and this is why. Post-game commanders head coach Ron Rivera suggests that the team will go back to quarterback Carson Wentz if Heineke doesn't, quote, get back on track. What do you think about that? You know what, bro? I'm glad that you brought that up because I seen that and then I forgot about that. Let me tell yeah. you my take on this. And this is gonna ag- and this is gonna aggravate me a little bit. Yeah. You would not be seven, six, and one right now with Carson Wentz, okay? Exactly. The playoffs <laughs> wouldn't even be a conversation. And Ron Rivera, bro, you've been there. You've been to the Super Bowl, my guy. Like, come on now. You know you can make and say better things than that. Tyler Henneke, um is better and gives you a better chance to win than Carson Wentz. We've seen plenty of Carson Wentz to know he's not the guy. We've seen plenty from Taylor Henneke to know that usually he is the guy. He wasn't on, on Sunday night, but usually he has been. And Carson Wentz is certainly not the answer. And, bro... This is, like, issue number four or five with Ron Rivera with the quarterback position. Remember when Alex Smith got that major injury and then he ended up putting Alex Smith back out there, like, like later on? Yep. Or or there was something to do with Alex Smith where there was a quarterback issue. Remember when he threw Dwayne Haskins under the bus publicly, RIP? Yes. Oh, yeah. And that – right there was a sign of like he probably shouldn't be controlling you know being a head coach there bro and then remember earlier this year when they asked Ron Rivera why the team was losing and what did he say oh that I cannot remember one word answer he said quarterback and just threw Carson Wentz under the bus as as bad as it gets and then went and apologized about it the next day. Yeah, that's... Ron Ron Rivera has no idea how to handle the quarterback position. And for that reason, he should not be an NFL head coach. That might be controversial. Some people might not like it. That's my honest take. Ron Rivera's been to the Super Bowl, but never as a head coach. You know what I mean? Wait. 
with Carolina. Remember? We oh, you're right. I was thinking about the Bears. I think, I think he went to the Bears uh, Super Bowl with the Bears as defensive coordinator. You're right. He did go with the Panthers. He should know better, and he handled Cam Newton situation. But, um. I just don't think he's cut out for it. He's been living off of that Super Bowl run for years, and and Washington needs to move on. Do you agree? Yep. So, Rivera needs to – yeah, I've had so many issues with Ron Rivera in the quarterback position, and this is just another one. Because I, I think even the commander fans will be like, what are you talking about? Carson Wentz is clearly not the guy. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's go to Monday Night Football. The Rams at the Packers. Well, real quick, so the Giants get to 8-5-1. and five and one, A tough game at the Vikings on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Do you, Because of that win, do you have the Giants going to the playoffs? Oh, man, that's uh, – I don't think so, bro, because, uh, you know, because of the way that – because that would put them at third place in the NFC East, right? Well, it depends what the Cowboys do because the Cowboys are kind of slumping as well. So, but yeah, likely, I mean, three teams could easily get in. As of this point, there's a, there's scenarios where four teams get into the playoffs out of the NFC West. Yep. Um, but, so the Giants are at the Vikings. That's, you know, probably a loss, but we'll see. Then they're, they host the Colts, very winnable game. And then they're at the Eagles week 18, and we'll see if the Eagles are trying to win that game or not. You know what I mean? Yep, for sure. So the Giants could be, uh, you know, 9-7-1 and seven and one or 10-6-1. and six and, one. and that I think that's playoffs. Yeah, for sure. So that one big win over the Commanders really does loom large, and I think the Giants I, – I think the Giants make the playoffs. That's my pick. Uh, let's go Monday night. Rams at Packers. Must wins for the you know Green Bay the rest of the season. They jump out to a twenty-four to six lead and win twenty-four to twelve. Um, Packers on a two-game winning streak and go to Miami. So that's going to be everything on Sunday. Sunday at one. Packers at Dolphins. Are you believing in Green Bay? You think Green Bay can sneak into the playoffs? I do, bro, because I'm always, always going to believe in Mr. Aaron Rodgers. So, at Dolphins versus Vikings versus Lions, there's no easy game on that schedule. Uh, it starts with at Miami. You believe the Packers can go into Miami and get a win on Sunday? I do. So, that's going to be must watch. Uh, what are you going to say if they don't, though? I'm just going to say... Unfortunately, my favorite quarterback in NFL history has to sit out and not make the playoffs. But they should. I mean, in Miami, it's tough, but you should be able to out-duel Tua. The, the question is, how does Green Bay's defense do against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle? right? Yep, that's true. Um, I'm not trying to interrupt, bro, but uh, our lights just flickered. So if, if you lose me, the Wi-Fi went down, okay? Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, so, one other thing, Aaron Rodgers has now thrown 10 interceptions on the season. That's the first time he's done that since 2010. Wow. So, something to keep an eye on. If Rodgers throws five picks against the Dolphins, you know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Um... So, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the lineup. That's what we got coming up, man. Uh, tonight, Jags at Jets, bro. I cannot wait. And then football all day Saturday, Christmas Eve, and then football all day Sunday on Christmas Day. Can't wait to open up our presents and see what we got in, uh, in these big football games. Yeah, bro. Um... It's crazy. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. I'm about to go throw some pork chops on and Get cook it. For some football. Enjoy some football. Absolutely. And uh, to you, I just want to say, please be safe going home, bro. It's it's actually blizzarding outside right now. 
Yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to go 100 miles an hour on the way home, if that's cool with you guys. Uh, no, we want the host of the podcast to make it safe. <laughs> um, Jags at Jets. You're not going to change your pick? Yeah, if it's game time, you're gonna start. You're gonna say Jags. I swear. It's a sneaky game, bro. It is. It's a tough one to pick. I, I'm telling you, Jags are gonna go into New York and get this win tonight. Because, in my opinion, whoever loses is done. Exactly. So it's a playoffs already. It's in New York. It's that defense. But I'm telling you, there's something special about Trevor Lawrence. Remember, Trevor Lawrence was pick number one, Zach Wilson number two. Yeah, it's going to be, man, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, man. Well, Merry Christmas. Have a great uh, weekend and uh, enjoy the presents. Enjoy the football and family and food. Yeah, uh, I say the same thing, you know. And, uh, again, rest in peace to the two guys that we lost these these. The two athletes that we lost these last couple of days, man, it's been it's been a hard week in sports, you know. Coach Mike, uh, Coach Mike Leach, and then we lost a legend, and then a guy who is a Super Bowl champion. So, yep. All right, Pete, all those guys. Merry Christmas to everyone that's listening, and have a great week, guys. And peace out. <laughs>